Hi, AfterBuzzers. You're watching the AfterBuzz TV After Show for Containment Season 1, Episode 5, Like a Sheep Among Wolves. Join us and special guest Kristen Gatoski as we break down the episode and give you our thoughts and predictions. Stay tuned. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, AfterBuzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. This song is so good. Hey guys, I'm your host Katie Campbell and you can find me on Twitter at Katie E.E. Campbell. That's Katie with three E's Campbell. And I have some amazing people in studio with me tonight. First of all, to my left, Gabriel Gonzalez. Hey guys, you can catch me on Twitter all the time to talk containment at Double G on TV. Yes, and across the table, Yvette Sanchez. Hello, you guys can find me on Twitter at Sports and Sass and that's with three S's. And Tiana Hobson. Hello, everyone. I'm on Twitter and Instagram at the Tiana Hobson. And very special guest, who might be my favorite person in studio, not only because we uh, share the same name, but her character, I mean, Katie and Katie, but really, Kristen Gutowski. Hi. Yeah. Oh, clapping back to you. I'm clap. A clap. You gotta get the ring on it. Get like a ding ding ding. We're so excited to have you. Oh, me too. It's been awesome already hanging with you guys. I'm happy to be here. Yay! Now, before we jump into the episode, I just want to say thank you guys so much for tuning in every week. And if you have not already subscribed to us on YouTube, please do so. That is YouTube.com/slash AfterBuzzTV. You can also find us on iTunes and SoundCloud. Give us that five-star thumbs up, leave a comment, and tweet us using the hashtag ABTVContainment. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what they said. Hashtag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so let's jump into tonight's episode because I just have to say I am loving this show more and more every single week. I feel like it's getting more intense and it's more exciting and, and sad, but, but it's good TV and I love it. How are you guys feeling? I love it. Um, Especially tonight's episode because I love Jake and Katie. So, <laughs> I, I mean, he confessed to a lot of people tonight that he's digging her, and I just, I loved it. It's official. It's official. It's JD is real. JD. Yeah. Hashtag JD. Hashtag JD. <laughs> Shipping that <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I, I liked it because now we have such a new power dynamic inside the court, and I think that's what we're waiting for. You know, we know everyone is trying to play nice the first few days. Now we're a week in, yeah. and things are seriously different. I like how we just jumped in, and we're really starting to see that extra tension is just really tightening up on all the characters, and it's getting a lot of fun now. And I think it was nice to see how Jake, I mean, totally lost it with, you know, the little girl. Oh, yes. And, like, how he was just so emotional and, like, so in tune to it where he's normally just, like, a statue and not as expressive. You know, we saw him get a little bit expressive last week, and then mm -hmm. this week we just see him break down in all his glory with yeah. sweat all yeah. over I feel him. like there's Swollen. someone we know. Swollen, you know, <laughs> glistening. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> Never disappointed if you put Jake in a wife beater. Never. Just, just yeah. Sweating. It was sweating with, with, with some oil. With oil and ashes. And <laughs> I'd get sick, too. <laughs> this whole episode was about hunger for food and hunger for answers. I feel like hunger was a, a theme throughout the whole thing. I mean, we started out the whole show with Jana talking about her first date with Lex and she's talking about food. Everybody's hungry, you know, and, and uh, I love seeing, you know, there's a bunch of people, you know, this is sad, people all over the court and they're hungry. They're eating birds. Is that what they're doing? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, there were some pigeons. Yeah. yeah. So if Desperate this is times. an avian kind of flu, can't birds have it too? Yeah, that's what I was so thinking. Why are they eating the, these birds? I thought they modified it for people though. So it wouldn't necessarily your common pigeon wouldn't have it. <laughs> yeah, that's but what I thought. As I'm of right saying. now, I don't think any animals have been tested to have it. It's just a virus within humans, and yeah. it's only spread through liquids as of now. Yeah, once the bird, once something's dead, you're fine. Yeah. yeah. So you could essentially kill a pigeon, even if it did it did have the virus. Um, right. You could still eat it and eat oh. it. I mean, yeah, it's really you're, appetizing. Yeah, you're also burning <laughs> it, you know. Hangry. Burning. <laughs> yeah, everyone's hangry, hangry tonight. Hun hunger, anger. <laughs> yes. They are. Yeah, people get pissed. I was wondering when people, you know, bleed or sneeze on something and then it dries, <laughs> is it still <laughs> infectious? You know what? That's a that's a very good question. I yeah. I mean, if if the dead bodies essentially lose the virus, I'm thinking blood can blood 
can blood die once it hits air? I don't know. Well, I mean, how does that does, really it work? It, it oxidizes, oxidizes, right? It hits the air, yes. but that's a good question. And does it have to stay wet or dry? I wonder if there's yeah. someone watching, like, are these people really asking that question? <laughs> you know, I, I don't want to say that I think that if you really sanitize something, you know, with, like, some actual cleaner, not just, you know, a wet rag, like, like the guns. would also be okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like, maybe Febreze it, and you're good. <laughs> Febreze, we're good. Yeah. Lysol. If it doesn't right. smell like blood. Need to, like some so, alcohol. Yeah, Febreze yeah. the whole cordon, and this whole thing goes away. I mean, yeah, yeah. why didn't they think just, of that? <laughs> someone should have right? thought of Why didn't they that, think that, of that? That's what they should have dropped into the cordon this week. <laughs> not that food. Not a food. Febreze and Lysol. <laughs> yeah. Kills 99.9% of germs. Right? Spray bottles go over time. <laughs> yeah. So speaking of dropping this food into the cordon, we start out the episode seeing that CBNN is talking about a blogger that exposed some stuff. He's got someone on the inside still leaking some stuff out, which we see last episode of Xander. Um, mm-hmm. Sabine wants to plug that hole, but the whole food dropping part, is that related to that as well? Or she, you know what I mean? Did that make her think, okay, we need to get some food in there, and especially now that people are seeing more of what's going on after this internet shutdown? Or is this just unrelated she just thinks they need food anyway i mean i think she she does is thinking that they need food but it's also a positive news story going out there right. and that's what mm-hmm. she said we need to control the positive things that yeah. are being shown and you're saying oh look we're giving everyone food everyone's happy everything's fine inside there because there's food now and everyone's getting it then that's a positive yeah. story that makes them all look so good you cover still. the you cover the negative with the positive so everyone kind of just forgets about that and they get the whole feel good yeah which story. is why she was probably rushing it so hard when everyone's telling her hey we need time to plan this out. There's seven officers inside yeah. trying to control. We don't even know how many thousands of people who yeah, do we have food. a number at all? Do they know no. like an estimate? I, mean, I believe mm. in one of the episodes they said something around like four or five thousand, but I could be. Mm. It felt like it's in that range. So let's just say four to six yeah. thousand. Mm. Got four it. To mm. six four feet. to six feet. <laughs> uh-huh. See what I did there? Yeah. 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 Oh, so. Nobody's heard that one before. <laughs> four to six feet. <laughs> <laughs> New statement. I like it. You, thank you. <laughs> um, you know, also um, with that scene, I, if I'm not mistaken, Sabine was talking about how the situation with Seattle when mm-hmm. they had to put up a cordon that this is about that time when you know the people are actually starting to run out of food and running out of the perishables. And they did a good job of showing that with like, hey, Bert's yeah. wife, all she has left is like one can of beans, one can of corn. But she made a oh, delicious oh, dinner for a, yeah, a delicious did. casserole. That was adorable. Love, <laughs> in the beginning, too, when Jana was saying, you know, you could tell at this shack, wherever Lex took her, they took their time to make the food. And it's showing her taking her time to make this nice dinner for Aww. her husband. They are so cute. And I really hope nothing happens to them. I hope so, you too. You just jinxed it. Yes, no, I did. thank you. No, I didn't. I don't jinx anything. It's okay. Good thing we actually shot everything. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> you can't jinx anything unless you have some, like, magic power that just reverses events. I don't yeah. know. Are you... I am a little bit psychic. You're a little bit crazy. Uh, little she's bit. a little bit crazy. Yeah. Okay. I think we're all a little bit. Look at the hair. Look at the hair. It tells you everything. She's got secrets yeah. in that. In that <laughs> what is that? What movie is that from? Oh, mean, so girls. mean Girls. Mean Girls. Oh my yes, gosh. I love that movie. That's I like one it. of those things. You it's can't like, what happens if I touch it? You can't sit with you. I know you guys have like this whole four to six feet. Four to six feet apart. You sent to the island. You were in the cordon. That's true. Is this why? Do you guys, are you afraid that I'm going to give you the yes. virus? Yeah. Absolutely not. I'm not sick, all right? <laughs> she sneezed well, a couple times know. while we were watching. Yeah. Yeah. I have not sneezed. You could right. sneeze in my face and be like, nah. <laughs> What's the Is, is it because I have a rash from the dog I was petting earlier? Yeah, is that really from the dog? <laughs> yeah, it was jumping on me. It was Chris Wood and, and Hannah Mangan Lawrence's <laughs> dog, Drift, was yeah. like all up in me when I, before we came tonight. And so I have a little... Don't, don't focus on that. <laughs> I know. A little doggy rash. Yeah, I know we talked about. <laughs> like, what is that? Well, guys, there's this new thing called a doggy rash. Not diaper rash. It's that's doggy rash. Quarantine this that, area. That's all it was the whole time. How about that? Chaos. <laughs> I know we discussed a little bit of this when we were watching the episode, but um, some of the cast members have said you know, that they've become a little bit more aware or a hypochondriac after filming this show. Have you experienced a little bit of that? Less slightly. Like, again, all my family and friends would probably call me a bit of a hypochondriac. I'm the person who, like, Googles things. You yeah. know, like, I hit. My, I was working out at a gym once, and I was using one of those machines, and I hit my head really hard. Mm-hmm. And I felt like a little, like, bump 
come up and I, and I started f- I left the gym like immediately oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like went to the walk-in and the doctor actually compared me to his child he was like you know my three-year-old daughter <laughs> hits her head oh. often and you know we don't really run to the doctor every bump and bruise and I was like okay so I'm, I'm okay be like, but that's not what WebMD said. No WebMD <laughs> said I definitely got fluid around the brain. And yeah. It's gonna swell and I'll be gone in four hours if I go to sleep. WebMD said if I waited five hours, I was dead. Fix me. <laughs> Concussed. It's over. Um, but so you know, I don't think it really it didn't exacerbate that wound, but it um, made me notice things like being in a plane. You know, <coughs> we were all discussing plane stuff yeah. earlier. Mm-hmm. And I was on a flight a few weeks ago, and there was this woman, and it was like, it was really, something was really wrong with her. Like, really, I thought, I was like, should we call the, the captain, and maybe he's a doctor, too? I don't yeah. Know. <laughs> he's really well-educated, and can save it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you get a little more paranoid with, and you, rea- you just, you realize how many people touch things in the yeah. supermarket, and when you shake hands. You know, mm-hmm. it's funny that you said that about aware. the airplane because I remember I was like, oh yeah, I didn't care. But when I was coming back from Atlanta one time, uh, this girl had like a panic attack, but she oh. like ran to the front of the airplane, and I'm like, oh god, oh, this is where it all goes down. Oh, I was goodness. like, this is where it all goes down, and like she did like the whole like sitting down, crouching, and I'm like, she better not be coughing or anything because the bull is coming around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I was like, no, nothing's gonna happen. She's like, I can't, I can't. And she was starting to oh, yell, and no. I was like, oh, oh Jesus, From oh Jesus, flying? that's not contagious. Luckily, I mean, yeah. actually, anxiety is kind of contagious. Sometimes when people are nervous, I'm, I get nervous. Yeah, I just yeah. didn't know what was going on, so I was yeah. like hoping that she wasn't like. They didn't you know, like, thank God and then she's, she's like, "Oh, I was just having a panic attack." I was like, oh, "I'm wondering why real. she ran to the front of the plane." Like, I if am. I if I ever like feel nervous or panicky, attacky, I would like try to hide it. You know, do some breathing. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. Okay. Like, you know, I used to get scared flying, and when I would uh, go on on the takeoff, I'd always uh-huh. freak out. I'd, I'd always have to like look at the back of the seat. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna say your character. I believe we're. We're going to explore a little bit of maybe how she handles anxiety, I'm assuming. We didn't talk about it much this episode. Yeah, it kind of, um, it kind of, it kind of, you kind of find a little bit more out about it, but I think it, it kind of was, sh- they gave that to the audience to kind of show where she comes from, but I think okay. Katie's kind of got to a place now where she, I've just said kind of like eight times, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> really hey, we're not word. counting. It's my new favorite word. Um, <laughs> but she... She's hand. She has a handle on it, and I think the drugs help her. And mm-hmm. you know, yeah. she kind of has a little bit of ups and downs with her mood swings and anxiety. You so know, I wanted to ask you about that because you know we don't see a lot of characters on television. I feel who really do struggle with mental health. And mm-hmm. when you found this out about Katie, uh, I'm assuming you did your research. What was something that mm-hmm. you wanted to portray about you know that part of the I community think. and the audience to really show hey you know because it's not just about their illness they are mm-hmm. there is a person behind that and I'm, mm-hmm. I'm sure you wanted to portray that what did you find in your research yeah I watched a lot of videos because I guess we kind of put her in the world of a type of bipolar right? okay. which mm-hmm. comes with anxiety and depression and I watched a lot of videos and there's a lot of stigmas like I have a cousin I have family who who, who have dealt with this and uh, there's a lot of stigmas and a lot of people have a hard time finding the right medication so it was interesting in episode four they kind of touched on that she's like i'm all too familiar with that Mm -hmm. dance of like finding the right the right Right. thing for me because it can really it takes away a person from who they are and um i'm a firm believer like i try not to take any medication for things even if i have like pain i won't take an advil i believe in meditation and i believe in all that but sometimes there's just stuff that you can't you can't fix with with you know getting sitting cross-legged every morning so she she struggled through it she's found her you know katie found her kind of the thing that worked for her but yeah also just not attaching you know to there's so many types of mental illness and it's an an incredible struggle and in my research i just wanted to make her somebody who wasn't coming up with like a stereotype of how she would be right okay she's dealt with it over the years so I wanted to keep her subtle and, and a lot of a lot of mental illness. I mean, you see people who've who I believe was did Robin Williams was he depressed he was, and he anxious? He was suffering from depression. He was depression, but a lot of people don't know. And there's like so That's many really people cool. who go through the world uh, with a happy face on, and you don't realize. So mm-hmm. I, d- I right. wanted to kind of make her that person who still puts on the strength, yeah, but has this world underneath. 
yeah. as someone who has family um, members who struggle with it I know that's one of the big things is because you know there is so much stigma but there is an actual person who's just fine yeah and you know they it's not what defines them and no. you know there is that stigma that yes it does and that's one of the things I really want to ask you because this is a v it's a critical character for a lot of people who may be watching the show and struggle with it yeah I think I think I think it is an illness that is not the person yes. mm -hmm. I think there's beautiful loving people and underneath and if they can find a way to cope with it then they can come back to life but it can become incredibly draining for the person and I'm sure you know they don't get to live life the same way you would with any f sort of physical ailment so right. so I don't believe yeah it is the person I think it comes down to a lot of things I'm sure genetics get a chemical imbalance yeah I love that you're talking about Katie you know putting on that brave face too because in this episode she's still you know the teacher and she's mm -hmm teaching the kids you know there's all this chaos going on but while we're here you're gonna learn a little bit of it you know mm -hmm. difference between what is it viruses or vaccines Vi vaccine and and vaccines the versus treatment, treatment. Mm -hmm. vaccine and treatment yeah right. and during all of this katie learns this you know she's starting to put all the pieces together mm -hmm. and very smart thinking like you know the timeline of things this, this isn't adding up are we being lied to so i just i love i like that she's that. questioning the mm -hmm. authority yeah. too because you know when you and I love that it comes from Quentin and it's so innocent and in yeah. how he's telling yeah. it because it's, it's, it's <laughs> just yeah <laughs> quickie you know from that it just you know from that sparks the you know the spark in Katie's mind of wait a second you said that you know her boyfriend used to come at night and mm -hmm. see her and then we're putting together they died before Saeed died and it's really I'm sitting there like oh crap that yeah. definitely happened yeah. and I didn't even I watched the first episode and I didn't even really think about yeah. the fact that you know they died before he did and I'm like conspiracy theory <laughs> yeah, yeah. The mind <laughs> trick. we were talking yeah. earlier and that's what I said you know like that is like not only just a personal intuition but that is like women's intuition like we know yes. when we're being lied to like mm -hmm. you want to lie to me trust me I will find out <laughs> any and which way to find out what you're lying about and Yvette, she why just... do I feel like you look at me when you say that <laughs> <laughs> I look at what you. are you lying I about I'm just, I don't know I I'm just feel that for you some know, reason. do you have something you're lying about? Maybe. Uh -oh. Oh. No. <laughs> this is the out. second time uh, you've been afraid of all these women around you. <laughs> you know, it, yeah. it's intimidating. You know, I, I, yes, I did lie. I lied when I said out of all the people on the panel, I would save you first if you were in the cordon. Oh. I'm joking. Oh. <laughs> JK, JK, hashtag who would Gabriel save on Twitter? No, just, <laughs> just kidding. Not no. me. I don't think a lot of people would save me. Oh. But That's anyway. <laughs> No, but it's true. Like, and you, and then you even brought up the fact you're like, and then a mom who has a child, like, of mm. course they want to know all the answers. Yeah, I think I think so. there's a women's intuition and there's a mother's intuition. You yeah. know, I'm not a mom, but I can't wait to kind of understand what that love is. Yeah. yeah. And I think she early on, Katie, I believe it was like episode two, uh, one or two, was talking about the timeline um, and asked about Can it. it. Yeah. yeah, because but and what he said was. Oh, everyone has different immune systems. Which, but I was like, that, okay, that's fine. But yeah. why would you say they died in that order? Mm -hmm. That doesn't make sense. So it's they still kind of she. But you know, sometimes mm -hmm. you hear something and you're you get a little intuition, then you move on. Yeah, yeah. Because you get sidetracked, and this was like a second time that reminded Katie, like, okay. She's like, yeah. wait a minute. Yeah. She's yeah. like, let's go back there. She's like, wait a tick, light bulb. Yeah. So she's, yeah. So you watch, she's going to find out something all by herself, and she's going to be like, bam, A, B, C, D, and she's going to pull Here's out like a, uh, um, and the a slideshow and everything. <laughs> I'm going to be like, listen, call in the authorities, kids, you two. <laughs> Just uh, get my little tapper. She, she gets a pie chart. <laughs> this, is what's going on. this is where I saw patient zero. This is where I saw them. They were boning. <laughs> now, 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 now I know the truth. Now I know. <laughs> and the rats were brought in. Can I say that on this yes. show? Yeah, you're fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, well, <laughs> no. <Afterball> TV exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to cut it off right there. Right there. <laughs> you know, I once heard the saying, spooning leads to forking, and forking leads to knifing. So, yeah. <laughs> oh my God, that that is is so I've scary. never heard the knifing part. <laughs> and so we're talking about yeah, boinking leads to death. I'm okay things. with forking, but I don't know about knifing. I don't know what knifing means. What is, is I, there a metaphor a, for that? That sounds a little 
Fifty Shades of Grey to me. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but, I'm scared. Uh, I'm gonna plead we're, the fifth on that one. We're talking about <laughs> hunger. Uh, by the way, a great line. I want to make sure I found it. We talk yeah. about hunger creates chaos on the show. Uh-huh. So I just feel like it was a good analogy that. Sadly, America, that one failed. Spoons, <laughs> forks, and knives. <laughs> hey, I, hey, I thought you were on my side, you know, uh, engineer. No, what I happens? got your back, but you're just digging your own. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't save you. I, I know this isn't Vampire Diaries, but I've escaped it before. I'll be good. <laughs> Speaking of this whole situation, you know, I was I believed Canarts when he said, oh, it's just different immune systems, and I was thinking... We were all talking about it on an after show before, you know, a couple episodes ago mm-hmm. that maybe the virus is going to start mutating. But so is it not? Is it the same timeline for everybody then? And did he know something? I mean, he asked um, he... Grandpa to bring in the rats earlier. Mm-hmm. See, so this is where the conspiracy and it gets fishy and him and mm-hmm. Lommers have been, you know, working mm-hmm. together. So it's kind of one of the things where you start to question everyone and everything. But you also don't know how deep this conspiracy runs. See, because yeah. what I felt like is the first time we saw Kennards explain it, it felt like he was just trying to calm Katie. And okay. that's why we all went along with it, I think. Okay. You know, it's like, you know what? Yeah, he just doesn't want to scare saying, oh. yeah, the bodies are dropping one, two, three. Now is when we're seeing, now, I think Kanitz is hiding something. Yeah, and just the way yeah. he answered when he's like, well, remember, I'm the one with the doctrine and blah, blah, blah. Right. Because usually, that? usually when someone, you know, the starts, fetus. is trying to hide something, they're like, well, wait a minute, remember, I'm the one with authority here. Mm-hmm. I'm yes. like, and I'm the one who can smell out a liar. But I loved how, you know, you answered him. Oh, I'm I'm sorry because you're not creating an enemy there. Mm-hmm. Well, you need you need yeah. I need him. Yeah, there. he's the one who gives me information. Mm-hmm. You, if, if he comes up with a cure, I want to be first in line. <laughs> yeah. She's smart. So, like you're yeah. never mean to the the geeky kid in school. Yeah, don't bite the hand. But then you also you. always have to look out for the quiet ones. That's no, true. true. Like, at the end of the day, he's still got the hot. Silent but deadly. Oh, yeah, I was gonna <laughs> say silent but deadly. He's Does he have the hot? Is that the vibe that you're getting? We, I thought, we last, talked about it last week with George, with George here. Like he's just know. really awkward and he's better with rats than with you. Yeah. So that's yeah, our analogy. Yeah, but isn't that the game that Jake does? He I, does. Yeah, I thought we were shipping George or uh, Canards uh, and, Jake. and Jake. I thought that was the... Yeah. I'm was sure the George would like that. <laughs> we were going to ask you, how do you, feel about, how do you feel about <laughs> them? We're calling them hashtag cake. How, how do, do you feel? feel about that relationship between the two? Can't okay, so the CA, right? Because yeah. people kept saying cake, and I was like, Well, no, you could do cake for for Katie, too, if you put That's a cake. True. Yeah, yeah, I just feel like he's just you know getting into my territory. Oh, <laughs> wow. and, uh, and, and I'm talking chip names, <laughs> I'm not talking about like actual you know, cake, um, but just really, no, you know, hey, the more the merrier. Okay. I like her style. If if, right. if if you know, <laughs> do things get you know crazy when you're quarantined and. And sometimes you just the, wanna you're in this box, you know. So maybe you yeah. wanna jump outside of the box. So do you think that Katie has up. thought about how good a kisser officer Jake is? No, not at all. Never no. no? She has she's I mean, she's never had sex, clearly. Right. <laughs> yeah. no. she, never. she hasn't she hasn't yeah. noticed Quentin all those, just puffed uh, out of that the was, air. That she hasn't noticed all them <laughs> she, she was <laughs> trying for that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. I mean he's such an angel child, you couldn't expect him to not, not the yeah. fact that, you know, when she approached him he was all oiled up and yeah. Yeah, she didn't muscles. That. She didn't notice that. She didn't notice that. No, I mean that's right. <laughs> Can we talk about their relationship for a little bit? Yes. Because I love oh, it so much. I'm like obsessed with it. Oh. I need the four to six feet apart thing to just stop yeah, because I need to. them to just like well, massively right? pent up frustration. Spooning, forking, knifing, right? Yeah, That's you know what? They're knifing, but I'm down for spooning and forking. <laughs> <laughs> they're both healthy. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. We well, don't know I that know, yet. but <laughs> you never know. That's we the risk. Know. Canada's is being a block. Yeah, he is. Being but I like Jake was talking to Jana about the whole situation and you know he brings up Katie and then he's like, Yeah, and Quentin too. And I was like, Oh, oh my gosh. Like, oh, he's oh, like, oh, like, oh, like, oh, like, like, Every woman's ovaries in like right. North America. Right. Like everyone's like, yeah. oh, like they're in court. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, Oh, he wants to be called Daddy. Oh, oh. daddy. Oh my god. We're goodness. going there. We're going there. <laughs> going there. Uh, you know, I gotta ask, do you get a little bit of heat from the female fans saying it's like, you know, you're encroaching in on my territory? Right. This is uh, the first 
actually no and this is no. it's weird but i got some hate when i first when we first shot the pilot and we were starting the series before anyone had actually watched the series okay. like, uh, there was one tweet that some <laughs> girl put up and she was like you can't put Jake with an old ugly mom. <gasps> and I was like, oh, no. <laughs> She's like, oh, no, she did What did you call me? <laughs> it really hurt my feelings. Damn. Yeah, I was like, so I just stopped reading people's comments because I was like, I am not, I'm not. I'm not a mom. <laughs> and you're not you're ugly. Neither and moms things. are sexy. Yeah. Exactly. You know, but, but she's like, if I was a mom, I'd be If I was male. a mom, I'd be a hot mom. <laughs> a sexy one. And uh, you're not old. So yeah. And you're not old. <laughs> well, I'd, ho- I'd like to think not. But uh, yeah, so that was a bit, you know. But And then I've done another project before with another kind of heartthrob. And I got like, die, die, die. <laughs> like edits on photos. <laughs> but those are kind of, that's kind of the extent of it. Things since the show has aired, people seem to be giving a ton of love, and all I've received is love, and the fans are just mm, incredible. Like, awesome. I'll just go on Twitter sometimes if I'm feeling blue, and I'm like, oh, damn, like, oh, they love my heart. heart. Yeah. So they're into it. Well, that's no cool. hate yet. No yeah. hate of the jate. Do you e. think that might happen if, let's say, I'm. We know that you don't know the answer to this question, but hypothetically, if Katie were to kiss Jake, that that might change. Um, I don't know. I'm seeing a lot of love. I think everybody wants it to happen. Yeah, I, I do. do. I, I do. do. Everyone can live vicariously through Katie. I mean, there, <laughs> yes. there you go. Just like just the hands, you know, when they were. I can't touch hands on the box. Forget the hands. I mean, move the box out of the way. But there is something fun about that, like, that beginning phase where you're like, like your hand brushes their hand. Oh, my God. Yes. Do you feel that? Like, zaps up your body. So maybe there's some zappage from afar. Maybe. It's exciting. I like the fence around the cord and it's just going to Yeah, they're always good, of course. Like that tension, you're like, ooh. I want to talk a little bit about this whole food drop mission right so we have jake in charge of six or seven which is not six or seven cops inside trying to get this whole thing done and um did you guys even suspect anything with this guy that fell into the cordon that he was doing something shady or was that just like a complete shock what was his name uh meese doug meese not at first i wasn't suspicious at first because he played it off so well about being angry about being inside yeah. but after the reveal and then thinking back on the first conversation of why he showed up in the first place and the officer being like oh what your bookie oh like your bookie wants the money yeah, or something like that money, yeah. and then I was like oh man that was the that was the sign that was the clue mm. so where did he go during the rest of the day yeah out. like what uh, was he up to it looked yeah. like he probably went and tried to find like an underground gambling ring somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there is people Cop in the fight. cordon. They're like, listen, we're bored. We're bored. Uh, yeah. I took it to assume that he went to. You know, he's obviously not in officer mode because we assume Jake assumes that hey, Doug just bailed and he's just taking care of himself. So I take it or, to assume he's kind of. He was taking the day while all that was going on to get himself ready to, you know, find some street clothes, maybe get whatever gear he needs to do some malicious stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm. But he I, could have been I just scoping this. things out to get an idea. Yeah, I think that's important. I, that yeah. did hit me from that was from left field for me. I had no idea. I was more shocked about Chief Besser being mm-hmm. involved in it since, you know, from the start he's been there with Lex telling him, you know, well, we're just taking orders from the people yeah. higher up and but we gotta play the role. Do you think it's Lommer's giving the Chief that order or, because she said plug the hole, so do you think it's her in this whole thing as well or is it just the Chief? Um, I think she probably has an inclination but she's one of those people like, oh, no. No, like she just puts a little mask over it, like sweeps it under the rug and, you know, but she, she's fully aware that there is something going on and she knows, but she does not want to deal with it. She does not want to address with it. She feels she already has enough on her plate. So she's like, I'll just leave it to whatever happens out there. I'm here. Nothing's happening to me. It's really shady too that the chief planned, he knew that Lex would say, you can't come out. If you're in there with a cut, you can't come out. And they've been drilling it in his head. No one in, no one out don't show mercy like this is how it is because we have to keep a lid on this virus and then he just used that against him yeah that's true but well we got to go back to (laughs) my favorite character to talk about sabine lommers 
She's your favorite. Yes. Yes. Uh, well, you know, I uh, would love that you said that. Yeah. He, well, you know, she, he hates her. hates her. I do. We want, well, if you hate I'm someone that so tells bad. you the actor's doing a good yeah. job. Yeah. Uh, uh, see, you... Uh, you guys missed it last week. George wanted to drill it into me that he told Claudia that, yeah, I thought she was going to get sick in the first episode, and I was okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> she is so cruel and she evil. Are. She might win the Emmy for being that evil, but it, I'll say it again. Claudia, I think you're going to get sick by the end of it, and I hope oh. your character doesn't make it. Oh, no. And, she did and, it. And, and if you'd like you to... Did. <laughs> hey, you're welcome to text her too while you're here and just let her know to tune in. Quads, man. She's, she's got uh, kids. I'll leave her alone. Uh, <laughs> but, um, my thing that surprised me, you know, at first when she starts, we saw that human side and that actually shocked me because she's like, you know how many people died in Seattle because we were too cautious and all that. And I was watching that part and I was thinking, you know what? You're being too nice. Like I and well, you gotta it, figure it, something it, like that. You gotta carry me. that burden. It tricked me, but then we see later, and I want to make sure I get it right, where she start, where Lex goes up to her about like, hey, they just this gang has taken all the food out of the court, and her and her thing is just, well, there's more food in the court now. Period. That's a better situation. It's like, really, you know, well, the, well, that. Mean, but then again, there's the heartless lamers that I'm okay seeing get sick. But you she agree? also has a point. You know, yeah, if, does. if they had waited longer, then everyone would have been, they would have had a plan to attack. Like, Trey only had You're a right. matter of minutes but to exactly. rally his yeah. troops, and it was one attack as opposed to opposing gangs yeah, showing like up. Opposing and having a whole fire. Yeah, the hillbillies could have come back. Yeah. The hillbillies. yeah. She could have announced it in a couple of days after they had the plans instead of announcing it because she didn't announce it until after they had that meeting when she's like no you only have one day right. yeah but i think at that point if things were already this bad waiting even longer would have made everything even worse because mm -hmm. people still had food at this point a little bit we saw a little mm -hmm. bit of people eating two more days three more days a week later they're out of food too so everyone's mm -hmm. more desperate and yeah. you don't know how many fights could start everything yeah, yeah you know people could start killing each other in the streets and eating humans because they're so hungry I and that's when they, they go, go for my plan <laughs> when people go for my plan I'm like get out of here so I mean, it's like yeah. I, I, I just know. give a good whack of exactly. the hand exactly like, <laughs> or doing? I just give like this death stare like yeah. Don't you touch my cupcake. Do not touch my cupcake. Exactly. Speaking of gangs, we have a gang that took over Teresa's mom's mm -hmm. store. And um, played by incredible <clears throat> actors, by the way. Like, they're yeah. solid. Yeah, they mm -hmm. are. I'm scared of them because they just have, the, they're like relentless. Mm hmm. I think what's I, crazy, the physicality, like, of their performance, that really came yeah. through in those scenes because it's like, you know what? They don't just look scary. They. They're walking that walk. I mean, yeah. I just don't yeah. think they thought their plan through that well. Yeah. Because if you have a guy, um, Jake found the guy who was looting. He was trying to get anything to trade for food. Mm -hmm. He's out of money. So if he's out of money, most people are out of money. So right. how are you going to get paid? And what are you going to use this money for? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, like, That's true. Uh, you, you, yeah. There's no point to have money right now on the court. I think it's it like yes, a big jackpot <laughs> of money somewhere. Yeah. yeah. I, I thought it was like that prison mentality. It's like, look, with them, we may not be getting money, but the fact is we have the guns. Yeah, this is true. our food. If someone wants to come in and take it, they're welcome to come through the bullets. That's why I thought Sabine was so cold because now it's like okay well at least they have food and then it's like now you have if innocent people want food at least before they they're didn't have die. it now you gotta you want them to face bullets yeah now they're gonna well, die no, they and you're gonna have money you're gonna have a they big number of money. dead people you're yeah. gonna have a big number of dead people just like the last one yeah. just in a different way they're not dying from the virus they're dying from the gunshots yeah. they did not think this through Damn, yeah just saying, they're too like, hungry and their brain's not working yes yeah. i'm really loving xander's character because i just love that he ended up in there for mm. Teresa. That's just amazing, yeah. you know? And and he is going along with the gang because he realizes they have the guns. They're dangerous. Like, I'm going to go along with Thanks. it. But I feel like deep down, you know, he still wants to fight against that. And I think he's going to come up with some kind of a plan to oh, yeah, go against totally, them. yeah, he's going to totally, like, flip a, flip it and go against them and they're not going to see it from any side. I told, yeah. I see that happening. Yeah. Well, we saw the gang member, he sneezed, right? So yeah. we're thinking that uh, I think they're setting uh -huh, it up. Then. Could be allergies. <laughs> you never know. Uh, I it don't know. Atlanta. That, that, that be, wouldn't be fun enough, you know, Kristen. Like allergies out there. Yeah. But, you know, I think they're setting it, it up. Human. It's like he knows that, hey, this is the, he's lighting the, the match. 
He's gonna let the mm. dynamite go off. He's gonna let them implode. They're all gonna get each other sick. And he's thinking, mm. that's when I make Ooh. my move. Well, Ooh. I think that you're, 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 ta- hey, you're thinking you're talking about a guy who was willing to jump an electric fence. Yeah, he ain't afraid of no gang. And, and I just think that yeah. Be- exactly. And because Jake knows that he's in there, Lex has given him the more the warning of, hey, there's a kid Xander who hopped the fence. Just remember, he's a good kid. Yeah. And so Jake knows that he's with that gang. So I think that together. They'll yeah. be able to work together yeah. to stop them. And I like that Xander, he kind of stood up in that moment when they were stealing the food. I forget what exactly he said, but he, he kind of stood against the gang for a second. And I think Jake seeing that is going to reassure Jake that, yeah, he is. You know, mm-hmm. Lex told me and I'm seeing it. So I think that's that a good thing. He's clearly being forced to do yeah, this. Keep your enemies closer. He's smart. Mm-hmm. He's really smart. Yeah. He doesn't play the game. He's a smart kid. Mm-hmm. They're setting up for some street justice, so that's what I like <laughs> about that. You know, hey, when Jake just threw People's down arrest. that gang members, like, you know what? That's what I wanted to see. You know, someone just set, lay down the law for the good people on the show. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> the, I did. The hardest part of this episode for me was the little girl Aww. dying. Oh yeah. <gasps> Katie yeah. didn't want to see any kids die. I didn't the whole time. I, I didn't. told her that they were gonna start dying. <laughs> you did tell me, and it makes sense. Kids because... are gonna die. <laughs> but you know what though? That's what makes a great TV show is when they make you cry and they make you go, <gasps> and they surprise you. And I feel like this episode really particularly did that really for me. That. But the little girl, I mean, oh, that was just. It she broke was too my cute. heart. Yeah. She was so is it cute. is it really bad hungry. that when he's like, I'm gonna save this teddy bear, I was like, Oh my god, what if it has the virus? See, that's what are you what I'm doing? Thinking. I did think like, about that. That was yeah. in my head. I'm like, You are dumb, you better throw that teddy bear in the incinerator, but no. I don't See, think it, I don't think it travels like on objects. So that's not what right. liquid one that does it? I'm trying to so think it's back liquid, through all the episodes, right? like is there a time? No, because it's just liquids now. No, it does actually well, here's the thing. The pen from Saeed is May. what no, Sanders thinks she got it from. All right. Oh, yeah, but we true. don't know. She got it from her boyfriend. Okay. Mm-hmm. Is that what you During think? that yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. Yeah. Where did he get it then? Who knows? I, I, I want know. to say, you know, it <laughs> really <laughs> did break my heart that the little girl died, but it made me think what might break my heart more is if something happened to little Quentin. Oh, that oh. would be devastating. You know, I, I got to ask... God, I, I, why do you oh, got to go there? You know, because yeah, you know, he had right her mom the on the there. show. Right, you know, <laughs> you, <laughs> no, his you got his mom right there. Right there. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, you, you work with all the... You work with the children, you know, you have the most scenes with the children, you know. It's such a serious show. Do they kind of get it when, you know... You, you obviously have to work with them. They're probably not old enough to... I wouldn't want kids if I had them my age or their age watching it. So do they get all that's going on? Oh, they get it. Those kids are like firecrackers. They're so smart. <laughs> like uh, Aiden, who who was the one who's like, what uh, if they had a vaccine? Why did all the doctors die? <laughs> she's yeah. great. She's just a little. She's a witty little thing. Like she'll spin little comments at you and you're like are you tw- are you like 11 going on 25 <laughs> oh my gosh and uh and zach who plays quentin is just like this intuitive young little Aww. he's so he's just so present and intuitive and and dd Dee Dee is just they're just all such great kids and really intelligent and uh they kept things light on set but they understood okay. the context they understood like what this all meant yeah, yeah so they were kind of like okay. the be- best balance we are almost running out of time so i just want to talk uh, really quick about Jana and her little mission to go get the box. Stupid Dennis. Oh, I know. Dennis. I'm so annoyed with those guys. They what really are I mean, making me so mad. I get the fact that she has to do the 48 hour quarantine like she made them do, but I would not have given them any of that food because Dennis and Tony stood over there and were like, well, if you're not going to let us in, we're not going to give you food and ate it in front of them. Did they but, spit on it too or something? Yeah. Like I'd have been food. like, life's a bitch, bitch. I know. I, I <laughs> think they let you know, Jen, Jen was I too nice to give them food. <laughs> yeah. I know. I hope they let uh, Sam, Sam in. Yeah. Sam Sam's deserves awesome. to get Sam I think they are gonna I think they are gonna let him in. Yeah. Like they're yeah. like I'd be like, Oh really? You're big and bad talking behind that glass, why don't you come outside of the glass? And he didn't. Uh, yeah. I was like, Exactly, that's what like, I thought. Yeah, he, he's gonna deliver some justice to the, with that crowbar. My, that's what I wanna say. <laughs> Jan is the boss at the end of the day. Like, she says what goes in, in bits and pieces. listen. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. my favorite thing about this episode is that at the very end, we have everybody, you know, all right, let's, you know, join forces, get together, and really try to become detectives. We got Katie and Jake's conversation. We got Jake and Lex's conversation. And mm-hmm. um, 
I'm excited about that. Like, let's look at the security tapes and let's figure out what's actually happening and, and the best way to maybe attack this virus because maybe what we're doing right now might not be the best way. And maybe they need Leo Green's help. Ooh. Yeah. Just hey, saying. he's a smart yeah. one. He's, he's a smart one. Yeah. And I got us before, you know, because uh, we're at the end of the show and maybe Katie, as passionate as Jake is, Katie's going to be the one to take off her, you know, surgical mask and kiss Jake. Oh, yeah, I totally <laughs> see that. Yeah. <laughs> she's going to go full throttle. I wouldn't yeah. put it past you. She's got some, she's got some guts. She's got, she that, she's yeah. got that determination. Yeah. She's like, she's, uh, yeah, she's got like, you know, she's got. She doesn't have any time for BS. Yeah. <laughs> you know, she's got kids to take care of. There's stuff going down. So I she, feel like... She's not going to let four to six feet keep her from what she wants, right? Maybe not. No. But yeah, but also there's kid, there's kids to worry about. So she might let That's her true. Tri- yeah. That's child trump hey, her libido. It's so. a big hospital. So... <laughs> <laughs> You're like, are there any storage closets? Or, right. so, <laughs> well, other than Katie, you know, being the one to kiss Jake first, what else do you guys think is going to happen for predictions. I think that Trey and his gang are going to pose a bigger problem with Jake and his very minuscule police force that he has in there. Mm-hmm. I think they're going to, especially since he already let them take the food, I mean, which he was outnumbered. There's not much he could do in that situation. But I think that Trey's gang is just going to play a bigger role in the happenings of the inside of the cordon. Yeah, hmm. I like that. Uh, I think uh, the outside gang and Xander is just, that's going to start falling apart little by little, and Xander's just going to keep playing it really smart. He's going to keep playing the, like, oh, I abide by what you say, I'm going to do what you say, and then he's going to play dumb, and then he's going to go in there and bam. Bam. So, bam. Like Emerald. <laughs> do, do you want a mic to drop? No. Mic. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks it's for having awesome. me. Yes, this thank you. Fun. Yeah, where can everybody find you on Twitter to keep up with you and talk to you about all things containment? At, at Kristen Gatoski. My yeah. name, try spelling it. Kristen <laughs> Gatoski. Yeah. Just, I got just this let one. Google auto, just write Kristen Gut and then And then I'll go. <laughs> there you go. Nice. And my then emails G U T O S K I E. Yes. Boom. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can find me at the Tiana Hobson on Twitter and Instagram. And you can find me on Twitter at Sports and Sass with three S's. Hey, you guys can find me on Twitter at Double G on TV. Hashtag who should I save if I was in the cordon? <laughs> you can find me on Twitter at Katie E. E. Campbell. That's Katie with three E's Campbell. Instagram at Katie Campbell13 and YouTube.com slash Katie Campbell Online. I have a vlog. Find us everywhere at AfterBuzz TV, and we will see you guys next week for an all-new episode of Containment. Woo! From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.